Stoichiometry can be a very difficult topic to teach, and it's frequently very difficult in terms of finding good experiments that require thinking, thinking on the front end. Rather than having students write lab reports where they focus on what was I supposed to have learned with this experiment, it's fun to flip things around and really make them think on the front end of the experiment. This experiment is titled Production of Sodium Carbonate. And what I love about it, it's a very simple type of reaction. And rather than saying, let's start with a certain amount of sodium bicarbonate, I tell them, I don't care how much you start with, I want you to produce a target mass that I will assign to you. I love it because I can go from lab partner to lab partner and say I want this group to prepare 2.00 grams, I want this group to prepare 2.25 grams, this group to prepare 3.19 grams. Each group can be assigned a different target mass of the sodium carbonate. It's their job to then work backwards. 2.00 grams, how many grams of this should I start with? So the only way that they can really get started is to be able to answer this question. What mass of the sodium bicarbonate is needed to produce the assigned target mass of the sodium carbonate? Over here, you'll see the setup that we have. To answer the question of the 2.00 grams of product at the end, if you do the calculations, you find that you need 3.17 grams of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. And I have already weighed that out here, and I'll put that in the crucible. So that goes inside the crucible. And now we'll heat the, the sodium bicarbonate up, and we'll get that reaction to occur. And it only takes a few minutes. The crucible that I'm using is a ceramic crucible. You could also use a metal crucible if you have that. I also like the fact that you do not need to use a lid on the crucible. In fact, you get better results without because what we want is the first reaction to take place where the sodium bicarbonate decomposes to form the sodium carbonate. Higher temperatures can cause other side reactions to occur. After a few minutes, what I like to do is have the students then move the baking soda around so it doesn't clump up. And so to do that, you want to use uh, two metal spatulas. And you can see it almost looks like this, a snow drift type of effect going on. As that decomposition process occurs, it looks like blowing ultra-fine snow in the wintertime. And we would let this continue to heat for several minutes. Uh, I can tell you that if you let it go for too long, again, side reactions can occur, but really that's it in terms of visual changes that you would expect to see during this chemical reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool down. And to save time today, I had already performed this same experiment using the same 3 point, or using 3.17 grams of baking soda. And the goal again, our target mass that I'm trying to make is 2.00 grams of the solid sodium carbonate. Because we know that, of course, that the two gases, carbon dioxide and water vapor, would be released into the classroom. So what would be left inside that crucible would be the solid sodium carbonate. 
and it should, if we've done the calculations right, it should have a mass of approximately 2.00 grams. Okay? The excitement as a teacher is saying to students, okay, once your crucible and contents have cooled down, call me over, we'll go back to the balance together, and we're going to see how close you were to your assigned mass. So what I have here, once this would cool down, and again, I did this earlier, so I've got my balance zeroed, and I would say to the students, what was your target mass? And they would say, I would, our group was assigned 2.00, and let's see how close we were. Get the rest of this out. One point nine two grams of solid sodium carbonate, certainly very close to the two point zero zero grams that we were assigned. Okay, and then you can grade your, their, your students based upon their percent yield, and a quick percent yield calculation, uh, well above ninety percent. Again, the real advantage of this, as I see it, we find out, we start the problem, they do their calculations, we crank out the, uh, the experiment, very, very easy, very simple uh, experiment, and very elegant in that you achieve yields consistently 95% or greater. Inexpensive starting materials, baking soda. Um, no hazardous materials to dispose of. Uh, and again, results all in one period.